Hello and welcome back to IME, where today we're going to be looking at equivalent fractions, decimals and percentages. If you haven't already got the worksheet, you can find it in the description below. But if you have, let's take a stab at a few of the questions together. I do like stabbing. First, we need to realise what do they all have in common? And that is, they all represent a part of a whole. As I said, all of these methods represent when we don't have a complete whole. When we use fractions, we put the amount that the whole is split equally into at the bottom, otherwise known as the denominator. When we use decimals, we use our place values to the right of the decimal place to represent how many tenths or hundredths our whole is split into. And when we use percentages, we represent our parts out of a hundred. These are important to know and find as we use these features to find their equivalents. All three, fractions, decimals and percentages, can be split into 100 parts. When they are, writing the equivalent becomes extremely easy. When fractions are split into 100 parts, the denominator reads 100, like so. When decimals are split into 100 parts, you have a digit in both of these columns. And percentages are always split into 100 pieces, as percent actually means per 100. Let's take a look at the question, 42% as a fraction or a decimal. 42% as we covered means 42 per 100. As a fraction, the per 100 is the 100 parts it's broken into at the bottom. The 42 represents the amount of parts we have and that would go at the top. So the fraction would also read 42 per 100. As a decimal, you need to find the hundredths column. And you need to put 42 in. But again, you can't have two digits in one column. So the four goes in the tenths column and the two in the hundredths column because that represents 42 hundredths. Let's take a look at another one together. We have 0 0.36. If we place this into the decimals, we will see that three is in the tenths and the six is in the hundredths. The whole number after the decimal is 36 and the last column is the hundredths column. So that number is 36 hundredths. As a fraction, 36 at top, hundredths at the bottom, it is split into 100 parts. As a percentage, it is already split into 100 parts. So 36 over 100 is the same as 36%. Let's take a look at when we are given a fraction at the beginning. Here is 15 out of 100. Hopefully, you have seen how simple it becomes when our parts are split into 100. So, as a decimal, 15 out of 100, you simply put the numerator, the parts that we have, and the first two digits after the decimal place. So it reads 0 0.15. We can check that this is correct by reading the entire number after the decimal and the name of the last column so the entire number is 15 the name of the last column is hundredths 15 hundredths which sounds the exact same as 15 hundredths as a fraction then percentages so as we know a percentage is out of 100 and our fraction that we currently have is also out of 100 so whatever we have as our numerator is the percentage that we've got because they both represent how many parts that we have. So 15 out of 100 fraction is the same as 15% because 15 per 100 as a percentage. So as a quick summary, whatever numerator we have on top of a fraction that is split into 100 parts is the same amount we have as a percentage and the same digits that fill the first two place value columns after the decimal place when we write it as a decimal, which also means the first two decimal places after the decimal can be wrote as the numerator out of 100 if you wanted to write it as a fraction or wrote as a percentage. Let me show you how quick and easy these are. 44 over 100, which is the same as 0 0.44, filling the first two places with my numerator, which again is 44%. 0 0.36 as a decimal. 
Well, these first two places are what I use over 100. And percentage, again, is 36%. Finally, we have 74%. Well, 74% is the same as 74 out of 100. And we use those two spaces. Yeah. Simple. We have a major problem. Oh, sure. My question only has one digit after the decimal place. Help. Let's start by putting your number into the place value columns. Zero ones and one tenth. There's nothing in the hundredths, so we can't take both of those digits and put them over a hundred. However, what we can do is represent what is in the hundredths column, and as I said, nothing. And nothing can be represented with zero. Just like any column that has nothing in it, we could use and place a zero. Now it reads zero. Point one zero, and I'm sure you know how to do the rest. So now all I need to do is take those two digits and place them as my numerator over 100, and those two digits are also my percentage. Easy. Wait, I've got a problem. My question only has one digit in my fraction. How do I write that as a decimal and percentage? If you read the fraction, it kind of tells you nine hundredths. The nine goes in the hundredths column. And just like Wednesday's problem, any column that doesn't have anything, you need to put the zero. So, nine into the hundredths column, zero before the decimal point, and zero after the decimal point in the tenths column, because we've got no tenths, we've just got nine hundredths. So, if the decimal is 0 0.09, the fraction is nine hundredths, the percentage must be nine percent, right? Excellent, you smashed it. Hulk! Smash! Now, crack on with your worksheet, and once you've completed that, there's a step two in the description below. But don't rush.